chumps, a Yuletide version. And here it is. <laughs> I have my Christmas pajamas on. Isn't that nice? This is the first time anybody showed up on Channel 17 with the pajamas on. My name is Bill Keogh. I'm the host of this program. And uh, my co-host is Joey Donovan. And Joey? I just, I just would like to say I hope this is the last time anybody shows up. <laughs> At Channel 17 in their pajamas, but after I saw Bill's, I took these off the Channel 17 Christmas tree so that I could match your festive mood. All right, we're even then. We're even. Okay. Anyway, we're, this <clears throat> is going to be a Yuletide version. Here it is, the 21st of December, the shortest day of the year, the first day of winter. Welcome winter, not. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so we're just going to talk about Christmas stories of family or incidents or whatever. So. If you want to share a good Christmas story, call call in 862-3966, 862-3966, and Joey, where do we go from here? Well, I think we have to first of all mention that tomorrow the days will start to get longer, so that's the good news. Oh, more daylight, okay. More daylight. So, but we really talked about Christmas memories, and you and I were filling each other with all sorts of stories about when we were kids. Can we tell them? I think for most part we can. Okay, all right. All right. I remember um, in our family on Thanksgiving night, an aunt and uncle of ours who would be guests for Thanksgiving dinner would pack up my brothers and sisters and me and take us downtown to City Hall Park where the creche would have just been opened. And of course, I think, I don't, you were probably maybe on the city council when we, because of respect for other cultures decided that it wasn't really um, probably the best principled policy just to have a nativity scene on city property. So we no longer have that, but back when I was growing up, there was never any thought to those sensitivities that I think um, it's good that we respect, but I always remember that as a big kickoff to the Christmas season. And okay, so <clears throat> so all you guys went down there, and the mayor was there, and I don't think it was the mayor. It was just our family and other people that there oh. was, you know, that the lights had gone on in this beautiful, life-size manger scene that would be um, on display in City Hall Park. Okay, now when you were kids, how about your disclosure of Santa Claus as a as a myth? Did you have any rules oh, in your? Oh, never. Uh, I never heard of that. That's you, you never heard of Santa. No. Well, what was Santa Claus in your family? Um, Santa Claus was Santa Claus. Oh, no, but did he come down the chimney and all that kind of good I never, stuff? You know, I never knew because we um, we always felt that he had to use a door in our house. Oh, okay. But whatever, I always was very glad that whatever his method of entry, although there were sometimes some threats that perhaps he wasn't coming that year, he always did come and it was always so very exciting. Well, why was it exciting? What, what was the excitement about I, it? I just think, don't you remember just building up all that time? Well, oh, that? yeah, well, well, we had we had Santa Claus coming. This is the whole thing. And we put out cookies. Oh, yes. Put out cookies that are right near the, we had a fireplace in the south end. And we have cookies here. And I don't know if we put a, it wasn't a beer, but oh. I, I had the beer. Santa Claus had the, had the soda. Oh, we had milk. Oh, yeah. Okay, it was milk. Yeah, that was because, good. Because um, then in the morning, we we ate the cookies, so it leaves some crumbs around. And then we always left a note. Oh yeah. Okay. And and the first thing in the morning, when I was younger, was to find did he eat all the cookies, and did he leave any message? Did he write anything back? Okay. All and right. Oftentimes he did, but I remember so many. I remember one Christmas we always you know we always had the big tree. Um, decorating and I'm not sure do you remember a thing that was called angel hair yeah that you could put on the tree and yep. what it actually was was fiberglass and everyone who handled oh. it broke out with this horrendous rash <laughs> and itch and little cuts I do remember that and I think we only had angel hair that one Christmas oh well wasn't it uh, wasn't it flammable? Was it? It was probably flammable. It was probably poisonous. <laughs> All those bad and it things. certainly was irritating. <laughs> but, you know, it was marketed as the next best thing for your Christmas tree. Yeah. So we had to have it. Well, I remember, you know, we'd always, we'd, let's talk about the night before and assembling gifts. But the, the, in the night before, we'd always have, a, after the kids went to bed, we sort of chatted around and then probably stayed up too late. So 
The problem was keeping the kids in bed. Oh, early in the morning. Early, they, they wanted to get up early, so we had to somehow put a barrier of some mm. sort to, uh, so they wouldn't jump out and start, we'd lose control anyway. That worked out okay. And I had to, we would take pictures. And remember those big f the glaring lights in yes. the old days of, whoa, anyway. So, but how about the night before, well, assembling it, gifts? Tell me well, about I was your the, experience. I, I'm going back again when I was a very young child. Um, in our family, I had two brothers, one of whom was an altar boy and the other a choir boy. Okay. So they always were committed to Midnight Mass, where my sisters and I were delegated to remain at home and go to bed early and be, you know, good children. So it was always sort of um, a problem because I would could hear my brothers going out to mass and coming back and there'd be all sorts of happenings downstairs but I was never privy to get up to see any of that. Why, so why not? I mean, I, I think why did they go to mass and you didn't? Because they had to because they were, my mother and father I never, I think they were too busy. Oh. They, they never went to midnight mass but the, the two brothers were involved as altar servers and um, no, choir boy. No, in those days you could have to, to uh, not eat after midnight. If you go to go to communion the next day, you you had to fast after right. midnight. Well, what's the story behind that? Well, that was such a problem because when we would go to our stockings on Christmas morning, oftentimes Santa Claus would leave some really terrific treats that you did not see the likes of, except if you'd had a very good Halloween load. <laughs> okay. And you'd be looking at them and touching them but you couldn't eat them because. because you couldn't break your fast. Okay. You had to, you know, you had to, certainly wanted to go to communion on Christmas morning, and to do so, you had to fast. So that's another reason that I think I'll probably have a high place in heaven. <laughs> All righty. Now, how, how about getting a Christmas tree? Did, was that a big event, or was that just something that your family went out and got a tree and came in and decorated it? I think it? my mother ordered it up. Okay, well. I, I don't remember. My husband and I, we, we would have those adventures with our children of getting a Christmas tree and choosing a tree. I remember one year, poor Tom got the tree on his own, brought it home, and there was a whole terrible mental breakdown. Uh-oh. It was, um, he probably hadn't brought his glasses to the, tr <laughs> to the tree store, but it was a very less than a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. <laughs> and so we ultimately had to pass that on to another family and go out and buy the second one because it was breaking hearts all over the house. Oh, wow. But I don't remember us. I just remember the Christmas tree coming and whether my mom had just ordered it or my father did. But oh, Well, we went out and bought it <clears> for a couple of years. And then one year, much to the chagrin of my family, I, I got a silver tree. It was all a silver tree. It had a silver post and a, these things you stuck in the side. Man, did, that did not go over well, but we survived on it. If you have a story about your Christmas, give us a call, 862-3966. We're just rambling here, and if you've got a story you want to share, let us hear it. Let's share it with others. 862-3966. So well, I, I really, how did you, a traditionalist, as you are demonstrating yourself to be today okay. in your Christmas pajamas, how could you ever have bought, it a, bought a fake silver tree? Well, I, I figured, well, you, you use it for many years. I mean, there was a but, fake tree. But couldn't you get a fake green tree? I don't know. Maybe this was cheaper by a dollar and a half. <laughs> I like your honesty. <laughs> it didn't last very long, but I still remember it as being in some of our family photographs. Uh, so uh, Another thing that we talked about, the traditions of uh, past years, were um, Christmas cards. Oh, good. And it was, um, you know, you'd send many out, but it was such a pleasure to have the mailman come, and there would be piles of cards. And I remember... Um, the Christmas cards at the at my childhood home would be in a big basket, but I, when my father would come home from work, that would be the first thing he did. The cards that arrived that day would be held out of the basket for him to look at and read, and they meant so much to my parents, and you know many of them were from friends and neighbors. Oh that, wow! You know, but we kept on you know 
everybody sent Christmas cards. Well, they did, and a couple of nights before or before the mailing time, you had to make sure they arrived Christmas Day or before. After arriving after that is is not so good. Hey, we and, have a caller. Oh, great. Caller, you're on the air. What's your Yuletide story? My Yuletide remembrance is going to my parents' house with a bunch of different people, families, in-laws, and ha and passing out caroling books, oh, and fun. we all sang, and it was great, except the two in-law children <laughs> looked uh -oh. at each other singing and said, do you realize we two, not blood relatives, are the only two singing on key? <laughs> we, are they still in the, the family? The rest of the family doesn't know where key is, but we all had just as much fun singing. Oh, that's wonderful. Are those in-laws still in the family? Uh, some are, uh, are they still in the family? After criticizing well, your talent. My, my husband is still in the family. <laughs> the, the wife of, the, of my brother is not. Uh, hey, I got a question for you. I'm going to see if I can stump you. You had those traditional Christmas carol books. What was the name of the insurance company that sponsored those? Oh, God. Oh, Lord. You know, I don't think ours were free. I think they were some my mother bought. Oh, okay. Well, the answer is John Hancock. You can tell me the answer. I could have just guessed Hickok and Boardman, <laughs> but we weren't from the Burlington area, so it wouldn't be Hick Hickok and Boardman. Who no, was it? It was John Hancock. Were they the little blue ones? Yeah, the little blue ones. The little blue ones no, you had? No, no. These were big, red, big, red shiny huh. uh, covered uh, songbooks. Now, has your voice improved since then? Your singing voice improved since then? I am paid when we sing. I'm a dragon boat paddler in, oh, uh, okay. in Burlington. I paddle with the, uh, the uh, Dragon Heart team. And when we sing a song, they give me a quarter to just mouth the words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for doing that, Dragon Heart. That's a great group. It's a and, wonderful group. Yeah, nice going. We have a, thanks for calling in. We have another so caller. You're ever so welcome. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Thank you. You too. Caller, you're on the air. What's your story? Hi, my name is Joe Maley. I'm cousin of... Joe, can you sing? Not very well, but I have sung with Joey. Okay. <laughs> What's your story, Joe? Well, I remember the generosity of Joey and her parents, especially her mother, on Christmas Eve would always deliver a case of Coke to 21 Ledge Road, who's in one of those old cardboard boxes with six and a half ounce Coke bottles, which was a treasure to the Mealy family. And then we would spend the entire next day, Christmas, at the farmer's house, and that would include all the Mahoney's, double Mahoney's, Letty's, Mealy's, lots and lots of cousins. And uh, those are the memories that we all cherish. A lot. And, and they were very, very beautiful, beautiful Christmas nights, weren't they, Joe? Did you hear Joey? Yes, they were. And all the girls were dressed in uh, dresses made by Margaret Farmer. Right. That's Doc Farmer's house, right? That's correct. Yeah, okay, good. Joe, anything funny happened to you? I mean, you guys had quite a clan there, Don Maley's crowd and Mickey and all that cr uh, crowd. Any uh, uh, farcical things go on in those days? In, at the Maley house? At the Maley house. Joe? Yeah, well, we we were at Doc Farmer's house, and of course we had uh, eight Mahoney's and uh, seven Mahoney's and or nine Mahoney's, seven Mahoney's, uh, eight Maley's, six Letty's. So whoa, you speak of farce, yes. You, <laughs> uh, all singing and dancing to Mick McGilligan's ball was quite uh, an adventure. Oh, good. It was a wonderful time. Well, thanks, Joe, for sharing that experience. Appreciate you calling in. Thank you. Yeah, have a good holiday. Thank you. Bye. How about that? So we're talking about Christmas trees when we're talking about, uh, how about shopping downtown? Did, how did you, tell us more about shopping downtown, Joey. Well, I, I'm I, not a shopper, but. Well, back in the day, I think people did, Church Street was the main shopping place in the whole area. And, you know, there was no University Mall. There was no um, Williston no gains, no... Oh, there was gains. There was gains? There was okay. gains. Sid and Lou and the brothers, too, yeah. often had Sid some good Lou items. Sid yeah. But um, <clears throat> I think Chris, Christmas at, at Church Street 
especially as I got older and you know you might be in college or something you go and you'd, you'd meet friends that you hadn't seen for a long time um, you might get detoured into maybe a little pub for a drink or two really to catch up with old times but you couldn't really go a block or two without just having a good visit with somebody and everybody was usually in good spirits and um, uh, just it felt like a real community and um, I was down on Church Street last night with some of my grandchildren and it was so beautiful and yet walking four blocks up to the big Christmas tree with the uh, children I don't think I said hello to anyone because I didn't know anybody of course we were all bundled up because it was pretty cold sure but um, it, it is brilliant and we've really grown as, oh, yeah. as, as a city yeah. and a town and which is good yeah. but it's it's not quite the way it used to be sort of a smaller community where you knew everyone before the show we were talking about assembly we talked about assembling toys on Christmas oh. Eve uh, to me that was a nightmare if you have a story of a nightmare of your house at Christmas Eve call us 862-3966 but the night before you have to assemble the, uh, some of those toys and being impatient like I was I said, I'm not going to read those instructions. That's baloney. I'm not going to, I can do this. So, and it was very frustrating. Did that same thing happen in your household? I, I think it was a problem. I, I was married to a man who um, always felt that he could um, probably erect the Eiffel Tower <laughs> with his own knowledge and um, would often start without the three packages with the 48 nuts and bolts and all the other equipment. So um, we did have some times that tested our Christmas spirit, but um, <laughs> overall it um, turned out well. And sometimes by morning, whether it was a gift of Christmas itself, uh, things were put together. We have a caller. Caller, you're on the air with your Yuletide story. What is it? Yes, I have a story that I'd like to share. Uh, it's a, one of my childhood stories. I remember uh, one time when I was young, maybe eight or nine, my dad, uh, put me in the car on Christmas Eve and said, come on, we're going to go get a gift. And I had no idea what he, where we were going or what we were getting. And we ended up going to a store. It may have been a Gaines or something like that, but it was our first color television. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I, remember, I remember I was so surprised to get our first color television and bring that back and set it up for Christmas Day. But it wasn't so much the gift that I was impressed with as the fact that my dad picked me to go mm -hmm. out of five kids to go with him to get that television. That's a memory I'm, I'm always going to have till the day I die, and I just wanted to share that with the group. I also want to tell Joey that I love her uh, her Christmas decorations. They look great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, and Merry Christmas to all. And, uh, Bill, I think you know who this is. Yes, I do. I'll see you on Christmas. Okay, Thank, Merry Christmas. Thanks for calling in. Yep. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I was another thing as we were talking about Christmas Eve, <clears throat> I know in many um, French Canadian families they had the meat pies, tortier, tortier that was so important to their um, culture. In our house, my father could never have Christmas Eve without oyster stew. And he, one night when I was asking about it, he, they would have oysters as when he was growing up in Underhill, Vermont, on Christmas Eve. And I always thought, how did they ever get oysters <laughs> in Underhill <laughs> on Christmas Eve? And then later, going to a, um, a Christmas holiday party at a big Irish farm family in Milton. And there, what did they serve? Oyster stew. So it may have been an Irish uh, tradition uh, because uh, I remember having this long conversation with these Irish uh, folks in Milton, and they talked, they always had oysters on Christmas Eve. Okay. The Keos did not? No, we did not. But I have a story to share with that uh, somehow the family went to Morrisville or stole to a, a maple syrup farm. That was the thing we, we'd go just around Christmas time. Is that your kids? My you? kids, okay. my kids. And somebody, one of my five kids, poured hot syrup oh. in his sister's boot. Now, first of all, it's hot. Okay, now we're out in Stowe or Morrisville, and it's cold. So when that sticky syrup gets in... In the boot. What was the, the sister's foot in the boot foot at the time? Foot in the boot at the time, <laughs> along with the maple syrup. So, okay, so it's hot to begin with. 
And secondly, of course, she's crying, and I try to come. What's wrong? I can't get your boot off. It's cold, and it's but. And of course, by the time we get home, the the maple syrup has cooled, and it's sticky. Mm. That was a little chaos, but quite a ride home with that unhappy child with uh, maple syrup in her boot. Now those were. I, I do remember one green Christmas growing up, and I thought the world had come to an end. Why? We, we had no snow on this Christmas, and it seemed so strange. And I wish I could remember, and I don't know if any of our viewers could remember what year that was. I think it may have been in the late 50s or early 60s. Okay. And, um, and now we've had a several Christmases, I yeah. think, that have been green. Thank God we're not going to have one this year. <laughs> I know. But... Um, uh, do you, you don't remember that? No, I don't. Christmas? I don't think so, no. Hmm. Anyway, so what, so oh, on Christmas Day, what you do, what you do for activities after you open the, well, then one other thing about gifts, this is one thing I did. You give all these, these gifts to these kids and they get, they're inundated with the stuff. I used to hide them. I put them away for, for, you know, they were playing with three or four different gifts and I put away five or six and give right. them to them later on. Yeah. Oh, that's all something new. They, they forget about it. So we sort of give them a long yep. life. So. Yes. Or, or if you, if you really thought you bought the perfect thing and, um, when I was trying to think like my, my pretty pony and oh. the cabbage patch dolls, oh, yes. I used to have a connection of old friend in New York who would call me and say, I'm on to a pretty pony. I think I can buy three next <laughs> Thursday. And it would be, you know, because you couldn't get a cat. There'd be lines to get a Cabbage Patch doll. Oh, sure. And, you know, I'd think, oh, my poor little girl's Christmas is just going to be horrible if I can't get this Cabbage Patch doll. And finally, I would score one or do something almost illegal to get one. And then the joy of the Cabbage Patch doll would last... 15 minutes yeah, or so right, on Christmas yeah. morning, and you just go, oh, I can't believe what I did to get that thing. <laughs> <laughs> not, not appreciated. Well, I think w it was, but not quite as much. You know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what would have happened if the Cabbage Patch doll had not been under the tree. Oh, okay. If you have a Christmas story or re Christmas related story, give us a call, 862-3966. Now, what'd you do on, on, on Christmas Day? Go sliding, go no. skating, or do, what'd you do on Christmas Day? I think. Did you get kicked out of the house after no, a while. As my, no, as my um, cousin Joe said, we would do, we'd go to um, uh, my father's aunt's house for Christmas dinner, then we'd go to my father's sister's house, and then we would end up at my grandfather's home, which he lived with Dr. and Mrs. Farmer on yep. North Avenue. Yep. And that's where we'd meet all our Mahoney cousins. And we would dance and sing and be downstairs playing ping pong and um, just would have a fabulous, fabulous Christmas night with all our relatives. Oh, wow. Okay. Good. And we had uncles who loved to sing and loved to harmonize. We always thought they were going to go on the Ed Sullivan show, but one uncle always had to have his head in so he could hear the uh, harmony. <laughs> and we, we knew Ed Sullivan <laughs> wouldn't like that. So he kept, he kept the group from going na nationwide. But it was just a warm time, you know? Yeah. And I, I think one thing we should talk about, though, Bill, tonight is I think you and I and so many others have such wonderful memories of this time of year. But I think too many others don't. You know, I, um, I remember uh, when my children were small, we, we, ado we adopted a, a single gentleman for Christmas and we stopped at his home, which was very humble on Christmas Eve and he was so happy that we had came and we had bought some little gifts and a fruit basket for him and everything and he was warm and wonderful and told my children some stories and we left that man that night and um, I realized how little we remember some of those people who don't have families and who are struggling financially oftentimes and some of our older people who have health issues. And um, so I hope that we all will sort of remember those people, remember the food shelf, uh, remember, uh, I think they're still taking turkeys. I know that they like checks and cash and they can really spin that into more food than just if you bring cans, but they welcome anything. But I think it's a special time for us to remember those who are, are, are um, not as lucky as we are. 
but that that's a good point, Joey. Thank you, thank you for bringing it up because nothing beats a personal visit. And, and on the other side of that coin, to be al alone at mm -hmm. Christmas Eve or the Christmas Day, just a, a five or ten minute visit to somebody who has maybe no one or yep. some, some related, that's the perfect gift for them. They may not remember it 20 minutes afterwards, but at least you were there yep. and at least you felt good, you did something, and they appreciated your visit. So yep. that's so often that we do have to forget and that. And it is a time where I feel as though you know, we have the automatic wallet going yeah, 24 hours a day I and know. thinking oh my gosh I have two more trips to the grocery store and I don't you know one of the things we're talking about uh, Christmas cards and one share one I think it was high school I was going to St. Michael whatever but we got these jobs at Christmas time a little mm. little patrons jobs at the post office oh wow where, um, Christmas cards were a big thing so you had to put on additional mail carriers so and that paid it, well it did paid very well and you had to have some political connection in those days well maybe even today but I remember we used to deliver mail in the Burlington area, yep. and you couldn't come back before a certain time. And when you're talking about we, you're really only talking about your gender. That's true. That is exactly true. Thank you. I thought I, well, I know. I knew a, that it that's was. That's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. I knew that it was. But we, we boys, we we delivered the mail and got and we we uh, we we would get back early, so we can't go to the post office and check out. So we went. We'd go to. Memorial Auditorium and watch the basketball team ah. practice. So we'd kill time and we'd stay warm, but we hustled around that route. But uh, there was also some jobs. Uh, when I lived at Barry for a while, I, we would open door for the open doors for the customers in a hardware oh, wow. store. You ever hear those stories? No. no, I mean, but I don't know what no. those those jobs don't exist mm. today. But that's one way we try to earn Christmas money is do do that wow. kind of thing. We were talking earlier about all the different um, men's stores on Church Street. There was Hayes and Carney, yep. and Shepherd and Amell, and I think J uh, John Riley, yep. Miles and Riley, and others. The Humphreys, but, the favorite store of smart men. <laughs> I remember Hayes and Carney's in particular because um, my father, you'd go in there, and Peter Carney, God love him, would know exactly my father's size, church size, hat size, everything. And also, I might pick up a tie, and he'd say, I don't think he'd like that. That was helpful. It was extremely helpful. And I defy that anybody could get that service today. Amazon doesn't do that. Amazon does <laughs> not give that personal care. Perhaps Michael Keogh's shop might do that. Michael is still a, he still does a good job there at the corner of College and yes. Church Street. Yes. So what else can we remember? Oh, how about the sliding downhill? How about sliding areas oh, yeah. when we had snow in winter? like. Yeah. What were some of the places we used to well, slide? Well, I went to Mount St. Mary's for um, elementary school, and um, right outside the convent, there was a wonderful sliding yep. hill. And <clears throat> we'd go to the convent after and just get cardboard boxes and just would slide down that hill and just think it was just wonderful. I drive by that now if I'm ever up at Mount St. Mary's, and I go, there's not much of a hill there at oh, all. I lived across the street from there, and so we'd go there. But also, I used to slide down Fletcher Allen Hill. Yes. And the challenge there for me was slide down Fletcher Allen Hill, go across Colchester Road, and getting back of Ira Allen School. Then. That was a whoa kind of a thing. While dodging cars well, going across I, Colchester I, Avenue. I told that to my mother once, and she bawled me out. I did it again, but I didn't tell her again. But so, you remember the controversy about when the hospital was building that parking lot. Oh, yeah. Because they took away, they took away the that sliding, sliding hill. Area. And uh, there were so many uh, Burlington people that really didn't want that to happen. And I guess in the theme of progress, you can't compare a parking garage to a hospital sliding hill. No, you can't. But, Joey, uh, this has been a great 30 minutes. It has been Doing, fun. And I think we've got some callers who added. Some callers. Thank you for calling in Thank and you. sharing your experiences with us and listening to us. We know you're out there, and uh, Joey, have a good holiday. And I like Ooh. your I like your attire. Thank I gotta say much. that. Thank you. I love baubles. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Channel 17 and Stump the Chumps. We'll see you on January 9th, our next session. Have a good holiday. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>